everyone in the metal community. Let me get this a little better here. I'm back. Hope you're all doing well. Had a good holiday. All that good stuff. Um, back with another vinyl collection uh, episode. And starting this off, we are listening to France's Himmendjörg Europa. If you can hear it in the background or see it, it's on Adipuser Records. A member of this band went on to uh, join and form Mahima, a really great black metal band from France. Um, let's get on with it. Behemoth, 7th, Storming Near the Baltic, by far my favorite Behemoth album. Uh, very much black in the black metal era of their uh, evolution. Very much like Emperor to me. This is on Last Epitaph Records. I think it's an early pressing, if not an original pressing. Got this a long time ago. Only one I really listened to much. Um, their death metal progression was definitely good. They're very talented musicians, but to me it lost a lot of feeling. This is the way technical, brutal death metal goes in my book. Uh, next up is Bena, uh, hallucinating in the Resurrection. Excellent death metal from England. Great riffs, really super thick production. Some bolt thrower-isms in there. Good stuff, you should definitely check them out. From Dark Descent, I believe. Nope. I can't read the record label. <laughs> it's too evil of a font. Uh, Bloodsrit, Hinterland. I think these guys are French. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. This is on Unexploded Records. I believe it's just a black vinyl. Eightfold. Comes with a printed insert. Lyrics. Printed inner sleeves. Oh, almost dropped it. That'd have been great. Black vinyl. Another blood threat. Unexploded. This is a. The well of light has finally died. The well of light has finally dried. It's a band that their newer stuff I really got into, and these two albums turned up on Hell's Headbangers for really cheap at one point. Glad I got them, it's good stuff. Not something I listen to a lot, but very enjoyable nonetheless. Turn an inner sleeve, lyrics basically. Black vinyl. Look at that later. And 10 inch up next, my favorite release by this band uh, Bloodbath on Blessing the Purity absolutely great four songs uh, Michael, Acker, Michael Ackerfeld's vocals the best he's ever sounded in the brutal vein excellent excellent four songs I believe this is a gatefold super glossy killer artwork nice pressing on Peaceville Black vinyl. Nothing exciting there. Ah, here's a classic. Proto death metal band. They were considered thrash, but you listen to it. This is definitely... It's thrash, but it's leaning into the death metal uh, realm. From, uh, what year was this? 1987. Blood Feast Kill for Pleasure. Absolutely killer, killer record. On New Renaissance Records. This is a band not a lot of people talk about much. Uh, you can find this. It's really good. Really good stuff. Uh, equally good is their follow-up Face Fate EP. Picture disc. Packaging is falling apart. God, I hate. I hate picture discs. Especially when they're in this crap. They all get blown out, ripped and torn. Lame. But, you know, what can you do? Also have the regular edition of this. 
in the same vein as uh, Kill for Pleasure. Great four songs. After this, they put out Chopping Block Blues, which was a complete piece of crap. Change of direction. Not worth investigating. I hear that the band has reformed. I'm going to tread lightly on that. Um, next up is my first ever vinyl release for Binary Recordings. The Celestial Blood of the Black Owl Split 12-inch. One long song from each band, exclusive to this vinyl. I still have some available if anybody's interested. Check out BinaryRunRecordings.com and go to the uh, web shop. Printed inner sleeve for each band. The Loon is obviously Celestial. The Owl of the Black Owl. 180 gram final. Black. Really great experimental doom slash black metal influence. Surprised these didn't haven't sold out yet to be honest with you. I mean I understand both bands are kind of a niche market but love it. Good stuff. Matte varnish on this too so it's got a weird soft feel to it. Definitely check it out. Same vein. Blood of the Black Owls. A Feral Spirit. This was put out on uh, what was it called? Aurora Borealis out of England. Two LP set. I put out the CD for this release. Gatefold, really nice gatefold. Really, it's another matte varnish. I believe there's a poster in here. Yes. Well, the Black Owl, 180 gram vinyl, two LP set. I believe they're just black. Yes, just black vinyl. Great stuff. Probably my favorite release by Chet. Um, heavy, experimental, amazing. And here we have Vinyl Solution, Bolt Thrower, and Battle of the Risen Law, original pressing. Funny story, I actually sent my original pressing to my friend Austin as a gift. Who's a huge Bolt Thrower fan. And he already had it, so he sent me his original pressing in trade. So, we just shuffled stuff around. Uh, 20 years old here, a week or two ago. Bolt Throwers, those once loyal. Got this 50% off at FYE. For like 15 bucks or something like that. 50%? It was 50% off. Excellent album. Is this going to be their last one? I hope not. They still have it in them, I think. They're still playing anyway. Keep it rolling, guys. Uh, next up, Borknagar Erd. Absolutely. I'm not a big fan of the Vortex era. Not Vortex. Vintersorg. Not a big fan of the Vintersorg era. His vocals to me are... I really don't like his clean vocals, but he does sing on this album along with Vortex. And this is a great album. The songs are really good, not boring, not folky cheesy. Uh, Vintersorg's vocals are great. A lot of the clean stuff is done by Vortex. Songs like Frostrite is absolutely great, great, great song. I don't think there's anything special about this. Uh, no print insert, just a, hey, buy our stuff, we're Century Media, yay. Um, print an inner sleeve. This is a gold pressing. Gold vinyl. Great album. Like I said, the price of admission alone, worth the price of admission alone for Frostrite. Great, great Vortex song. Whenever I listen to that on the iPod, I end up like repeating it like five times in a row. It's just a great song. And moving on, a friend of mine's band, Andrew from the Chachwin, is in this band. Brimstone Coven. Got stickers and all sorts of stuff in here. This is on uh, uh, STB Records. Blue vinyl, sky blue vinyl. This is a weird. Uh, I've seen other people show, they're like a J, it's like a J card. Metallic print on, it's a heavy stock, song titles. I got a bunch of stickers with it too that I think he just threw in. But uh, great, 
great stoner rock. They after this they signed to Metal Blade Records. Good stuff. And next up, the Day of Wrath Bulldozer. Italian Venom, basically. Venom, Motorhead, weird, twisted, dark. As you can see from the uh, picture. <laughs> These guys are pretty grungy, slimy, uh, death slash black metal. Like I said, a lot of people consider them the Venom, Itali the Italian Venom. Uh, oh man, what's the song on here that's so great? I haven't listened to this in a while. The Exorcism? No, Insurrection of the Living Damned. Really good stuff. I think it was on a comp from way back. Was it Speed Kills? Got me into that band. Next up, my poor vinyl collection of Burzum. From the Depths of Darkness. You know what? When this came out, people were bitching about it in reviews. Um, basically, Varg re-entered the Greek Holland studio. And um, re-recorded songs from his first two albums because they weren't the way he wanted them to sound. You know, they, it's that excuse, they always use that excuse. It, the original versions wasn't what we wanted it to sound like. Well, he went back in and re-recorded them. And to be completely honest, this is still killer. The, mater the subject material is awesome. The only thing that's really changed is his vocals are the higher end, shrieky style, uh, more modern black metal style as opposed to the crying orc style, which which was on the first two albums from him. But this is great, man. It sounds good. The feel is still Burzum. I know when this, when I first listened to this thing, I'm thinking, wow, this is a move you pull when you're wanting to move away from metal. Like, I want to end the chapter with um, going back and polishing up some older songs and uh, then move on to a new direction, which is what he did completely what he did and it's kind of sad actually because his uh, post prison album black metal albums to me are fantastic this is on white vinyl 2 LP set and the album after this is where the departure began I still like this but it's really strange uh, how do you say this um guitar 2LP set, gatefold. There are very few elements of black metal hanging on to this. Not a lot. Um, a lot of these songs to me sound like bedtime stories for his kids, but with weird atmosphere. Gray vinyl. Or is that silver vinyl? I don't know. Can't tell in this light. Again, I do love this album. I don't love it. I do like this album. A lot of people hate it. But... I enjoy it. It's really sad that this is the last metal input we're going to have from him. I don't know if that's the case or not. Maybe when money starts getting tight, we'll bust out another black metal record. Fingers crossed. And last for this update is um, Caladan Brood, Echoes of Battle. This is a pretty impressive set. A lot of people have shown this off, so I probably shouldn't go too crazy here. It comes with two posters. This is a gatefold. Really nice gatefold on uh, Northern Silence. Printed inner sleeves. Mine is the purple vinyl. And comes with two, uh, a sticker. Two uh, posters. This band, when I first heard this, I'm, I kind of discredited them as, you know what, these guys are a summoning ripoff, plain and simple. And you know what, they are a summoning ripoff. But, the uh, choral vocal arrangements and the songs and the production, in a lot of ways they take the summoning formula and mildly fine-tune it to their own needs and put out an incredible record here. I, I'm really interested to hear the, uh, the follow-up to this. Um, the LP version has two summoning covers, The Passing of the Great Company and uh, Marching Homewards. They nail it. I mean, the, the, the drum machine, everything. Perfect. Uh, these guys are great. And don't let the summoning 
uh, emulation deter you like, oh, they're just a clone, because absolutely top-notch stuff. And with that, we're about 15 minutes, and thanks for watching. I'm getting really close to 200 subscribers, and I just want to thank everybody for uh, your comments, your likes, and subscribing. You know, it's made this kind of fun. And I'm thinking about, yeah, I'm still going to do some reviews possibly down the road here, maybe soon. I'm also thinking about when I hit 200 subscribers doing a question and answer. It seems like people like those. be interesting to see what you guys have to say. And for now, that's it. I'll probably see you next week. Thanks again, guys.